so you can use the tools in the film load creator separately. I do hope in a future update they will add a checkbox to have the option to turn on and off this black magic film stop. If you want the thing you love, you did it! Congratulations! Hey guys, I'm Danny, a friendly neighborhood colorist, and Blackmagic Design has released DaVinci Resolve 19 Public Beta version 5. And in this version, they actually make the tweak that we have all been waiting for, which is to control the film look or the stock film look when you're using the film look creator. So in this video, I'm going to do a color breakdown of the different core looks in the film look creator. I have a clip here right now, which is a test image from Ari, and also this is a grayscale ramp. So if you go back to our RE and I have this film look creator set up so that only the film look itself can come true without the other settings like the color, the split tone and all the other effects. So you can do this by reducing the color blend and effects blend right down to zero because the color blend doesn't affect the film look section over here. It only affects, if I turn it on, you can see that it only affects the color settings and the split tone. So if I turn it all down to zero, you won't have any effects coming from the color settings and also the split tone. So now what we are gonna feed into this image is only the film look. So if my film look blend set to 100%, which is 1.0, we can set different core looks which we will go through them later. So with the cinematic core look selected, let's see what kind of color adjustments does it make. If I go to full screen and turn the film look creator on and off. So first thing that we're gonna judge it by is the overall look. You can see that the overall saturation actually gets reduced. And there's this sort of greenish overlay that you can notice if you see his shirt over here which if you look over to your waveform, we have a very neutral white. If I turn on the film look creator, you can see that the green is coming through at the top end. So that's how we know that there's a layer of green applied to the overall image. And the magenta in her skin also gets a little bit more greenish. And the overall saturation, even the blues and the reds over here, we can notice that it actually dampens down. So we can say that the saturation overall is reduced. And another thing I'm noticing is with the yellows. If you see the trees over here with this, it's slightly green, but I can also classify it as yellow. It actually switches over to green and then the luminance of it dampens down also. So you get a very low contrast and green effect to the overall image. So if we apply the same thing on this grayscale RAM cinematic, if I turn it off and on, you can see that our whites in this area actually becomes green, which confirms the effect that it's giving. And there's a slightly blue tone to the shadows over here without affecting the blacks at all. If you look at our waveform, you can see that this area towards the highlights, but not on the highest point, which is the white point itself, it's going towards the green, and towards the bottom, it's going towards blue and then it's not affecting the blacks at all. So we have pure blacks and pure whites while the effects are on these middle areas only, right? So that's for the cinematic core look. So moving down to the other looks we have, we have Rochester, Akasaka, Elated and also Vintage. So I'm going to credit Darren Mostyn for actually having knowledge about this, which is the headquarters for Kodak is actually in Rochester and the headquarters for Fujifilm is in Akasaka. So this is sort of like a hint to tell you maybe the inspiration of where Blackmagic Design get this core looks from. So let's see what kind of effects does it give. If I go to Rochester and let's do the same test, let's do a full screen and turn it on and off. There is sort of like a blue overtone to the image and the greens over here, like I mentioned just now, actually becomes more yellowish. And I'm noticing that the blue over here, which is a very navy blue, it actually becomes very tealish and very light all of a sudden. So most of the effects are to the blue, but our yellow down here is actually turning a little bit orangey, yeah. So skin tone still looks good. But then we have this sort of tealish blues 
and a little bit more blues in the shadows as well. So let's apply this to our grayscale. And let's see what we have. So if you notice, yep, we have a lot more blue in the shadows over here. And there's slight hint of green in the highlights without affecting the mid-tones where the skin tones usually sit. So if we look our, at our waveform, we can confirm that by knowing, yep, there's an adjustment towards the lower end and also towards the higher end. But this middle point act here actually moves a little bit higher compared to the cinematic if I switch over. The cinematic, the midpoint is over here, but then for Rochester, the midpoint is somewhere over here. So we can conclude that Rochester, which is our Kodak core look, gives us more of a blue. So cinematic is more of a greenish look and Rochester is more of a bluish look. So let's switch over to Akasaka and let's see the differences. If I turn it off, turn it on. So a thing that I'm noticing that is quite common for all these looks is that they like to reduce down the saturation quite a bit. Maybe that gives a more pleasing look, but it will definitely give you less contrast, which I'm not quite sure whether that relates to the filmic look. So we are having definitely a cooler tone overall. If I turn it on and off, you can see on his shirt over here, you can see a bit more neutral. If I turn it on, it goes a bit more greenish and bluish this time. So it's not totally green in the highlights. It's a little bit more bluish as well. Cooler tone. And same for the yellow. It actually becomes a little bit orangey. But this time, our blue, our navy blue over here doesn't actually switch over to teal. But our red, on the other hand, gets reduced quite a lot. So another common thing about these three looks right now is that this gray scale over here, it doesn't actually move that much, which is, which is something that we want because we don't actually want to change our skin tones, which sits right in the middle end. So we just want to make the adjustments to the highlights and more towards the shadows. Right, so let's apply this to our grayscale. And we can see, yep, we're having some blue undertones and then some slightly greenish highlights but without affecting the pure white point, which is over here. Same characteristics. So if we compare it to the Rochester, it's just a slight difference. Rochester, Akasaka. So Akasaka, I'm noticing a bit more blue on the shadow end compared to Rochester. All right, Rochester is more toned down. If cinematic, it's more neutral towards the shadows. If you notice the shadows over here on Akasaka, it's very bluish. If I switch it over to cinematic, it becomes more neutral. So let's switch over to Elated and see what kind of effects does it give. For Elated, same thing, it's giving very low saturation levels. And for our navy blue this time, it also gets lifted up as well. So we lose a lot of density and color over there and it switches over to a more tealish tone. And same to our yellow in the trees over here, it actually switches over to a very dark green. But other than a low saturation, I'm not sure what to say about this. Let's try this on the grayscale and see what kind of effect does it give. So if I turn it on and off, you can see that the same thing, the same reaction is uh, appearing in the waveform. We have this midpoint that's not moving and the black point and white point. So the only adjustments is to this highlights area and also this shadows area. So what we have here is sort of like a greenish on this higher point and a very neutral bluish. So if we look at the circles in our waveform, we can see that the blue and the green is sticking together. So this means that it's more of a bluish kind of effect. So if we compare Elated to Akasaka, for example, you can see that Elated is more greenish than Akasaka. And if we compare it to Cinematic, it's not much of a difference, just that 
elated we have more blues in the shadow region over here. So I'll make a full comparison table if you guys are interested in that to show you guys uh, what are the differences in all this. So the last one you have here is vintage, which this makes a very big difference if you can see the waveform comparing to the rest. Vintage, it still doesn't change your white point, which is something very good. But for the whole middle area over here, it actually switches up the colors and gives a bit, a lot more green to this area here and slightly bluish to the shadow regions. So we, if we apply this onto this image, we can see that this is a very heavy look for the vintage. Yeah, everything still goes more desaturated and there's an overtone of this tealish green to the overall image. So this is very obvious. You can see the greens in the waveform is popping out a lot more. And if this is a look that you're going for, then it's very good for your use case. So those are the five new looks in the Blackmagic Design Film Look Creator. Whether you like it or not, that's up to you. But now you have the option to turn off the film blend if you don't want to use it, but you still want to use the other tools such as if I switch on my color blend and I can go down to the split tone tool and use this exclusively without applying this film look or the core look to the image. So I can use the split tone here and adjust for the hue angle if I want to and create this very nice split zone. So if I apply this same settings to the grayscale, you can see that I can use this split tone exclusively without affecting any of the other parameters, right? So I can do split tone and I can move this around, which is a very powerful tool, this split tone. And Blackmagic Design has given us the option to use this exclusively. So this new split tone tool is very easy to use and it's definitely something that I want to include into my visionary power grid template version 5 which I will release once DaVinci Resolve 19 is out of the public beta version. And I might also release a video on how to use this split tone tool exclusively because there are some adjustments that you have to make in the color settings in order to remove that film look so that it doesn't affect your clips in ways that you don't want to. All right, so that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.